Mr. Tan, or fondly Hello, known Dato. as Nat. Yes. yes. Right. And I remember you fondly as Nat in school. And that was uh, in 2009, isn't it? Oh, much younger than that. I finished SPM in 97, much older than that. <laughs> oh, I see. But anyway, uh, you were deputy head boy in school. And I remember you were quite expressive. But that's good. You know, in those days, we were we tried. We were very old-fashioned. and We didn't want the children to say too much. But I'm glad you did. And you set the tone, actually, in school that now we do so many debates and so on and so forth. Tell us a little bit about yourself. And I understand you went to Harvard and you did some uh, uh, something on conflict studies or something like that. Can you, can you say something about what you've done after school? Hello? I think there's something wrong. I cannot hear anybody. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry about that technical um, something wrong, you know, uh, glitch, technical glitch. Uh, well, let's start again, Ned. Could you tell us a little bit about what you did in Harvard? I remember, so, I understand that you went there to read uh, conflict and uh, peace or something like that. Could you say something about your course? Yes, I'm so sorry. The internet was uh, my problem. Uh, but yes, uh, I studied peace and conflict studies. Uh, this was uh, late 90s, early 2000s. So this was after the you know, the end of the Cold War, there was a lot of um, civil wars going on in Africa, places like Southeastern Europe, things like that. It's a breakdown, you know, there's a lot of humanitarian disasters and war, so that was what I was studying. I did a little bit, I spent a little bit of time in Sierra Leone, doing a bit of like field studies kind of things. I worked for the special court in Sierra Leone at the time that was uh, prosecuting war crimes. Um, yeah, so that's what I did for a while. I came back to KL in about 2004, I think, um, 2004, 2005. Uh, I started working with, uh, I, I went to Aceh after the tsunami. So I so working there for about uh, three months or so, uh, doing relief work. Uh, and I came back, started working with an uh, NGO for refugees. Um, I started working in politics for a little while and a um, whole bunch of things after that. My, uh, doing work in uh, admissions consulting, worked with my dad for a while. Um, and then worked in communications consulting for the Slango State Government for about three years. Yeah, so. That kind of stuff like bouncing it's been quite a varied career <laughs> but it's been interesting yes. yeah 
Yes, I think your work is very interesting. So you could say, could I say that, you know, over these years of working with uh, a lot of organization, and then you get into what you call a social organization, you know, management, management of, uh, you know, young people and society, and maybe working towards teaching or training people uh, in terms of nationhood. Can I say that? It's definitely a, an area of interest of mine. Uh, my pretty much my whole family are made out of teachers in one way or another. Like they've been involved in different different aspects of teaching. Um, and yes, for me, of course, you know, I'm 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 personally very interested in the idea of like, what does it mean to be Malaysian? You know, uh, I think it's a question that's changed over the decades, over the years, and you know, um, I think it's it's a question that you know, it's uh, not not answered well enough yet. Actually, you know, we are so we are so caught up about our differences as Malay, Chinese, Indian, you know, the, uh, Sabah, Sarawakian, that kind of thing that we don't think a lot about what it is, what it means to be Malaysian. And part of it is due to the way our political system works, you know, when each main party is a race-based party, then we start to see everything in, in, you know, through racial lenses and things like that. And I think, I think it's 2020, I think people are pretty tired of that kind of thinking. Right? I think that kind of divisiveness doesn't really serve Malaysia anymore. Doesn't it? It, 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 it doesn't add value to, to us as a nation. It doesn't... ...patients as a whole. Uh, and that's a big, that's a big um, reason why we started Power Alliance. It's been quite interesting. One of the main things we wanted to do was to, to basically bridge the, you know, I mean, uh, the Malay and versus non-Malay divide. Now. Of course, in East Malaysia, they have slightly different dynamics and we are obviously, you know, very, they always, they're always forgotten. So we won't always remember Sabah and Sarawak. But in Peninsular Malaysia, of course, it's basically Malay versus non-Malay, Muslim versus non-Muslim. And this is the problem that's gotten especially bad in the last decade or two, I think, you know, so, you know, and, and in, in that process, you know, with the, the way the internet and social media works now, there's a lot of siloing going on. We, we become stuck in our own communities, right? And we only little echo boxes where we only hear the opinions of people who agree with us. And so we want to, we want to breach that. You know? So I, I've had the good fortune of working with, um, especially these two organizations, uh, Abim and Ikram, uh, you know, that are really grassroots Islamist organizations that a lot of non-Malays, non-Muslims a little bit, or even some liberal Malays, yeah, they feel very nervous about all oh, this Islamic, you know, they're very conservative, they are out to chop off my hand or things like that, which I think is very untrue, like, you know, it's a, a lack of exposure, pakkenal, makkenal, cinta kind of thing. You know, I think, I think um, even though they are Islamists and, you know, have are grounded in very, Islamic principles, you know, they are very Malay organizations, obviously. They still, you know, have a lot of views that are very reasonable. You know, they are very interested in reaching across the divide as well. You know, um, so I'm been, part of our work is to try and make those connections uh, and, and, and give them a bigger audience, you know, show, show people that, you know, that, that there's a lot more that unites us than divides us. Uh. Yes, I think that's really true. The thing is this, you see, Matt, my generation, my generation is that generation, old generation, you know, I came out uh, from university in the early 70s. And then we go on with the NEP and so on and so forth. So the system itself actually has, uh, it's, it has sort of uh, boxed us in, you know, into Malay, non-Malay, Islam, non-Muslim, and so on and so forth. That's, that is history, our history, you know. But I'm glad to see that people like you, uh, young people now, I think young people should should embrace this idea that we are all Malaysians, you know. And, and I, I think there's a blessing in, but I don't know whether I should say a blessing in this COVID-19, but we should learn from it, you know. The virus doesn't really show, uh, doesn't really choose, you know. It's, it is color blind, it is a religion, a race blind. We are all one race, human race. And in Malaysia, we are all Malaysians. And I'm glad to know that People like you, young people. Now, Nat, you are the conscience of the young people, you know. And we always say uh, the generation is for the future for the young people, but we don't allow the young people to think or to voice whatever uh, their own opinion. But with social media now, you cannot hide. 
you cannot hide. People are free to see what they want to see. And I'm glad to see that uh, young people like you are coming out and having a voice and can be our voice, you know. But what's important, I think, education. Education is so important to open our minds, isn't it? Yes, of course, you know, and, and uh, so you're, you're in exactly the right industry, you know. Uh, education is always something that's been close to our hearts and you really build a lot of you know, you build character like, and character is essentially what drives the nation at the end of the day. Uh, we are very much believers in that. You know, so again, uh, this uh, project, Wow San Raya, there's a lot about narrative, you know, this idea of being Malaysian and, 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 and not being caught up in racial divide. I mean, sometimes, we, you know, we, we, racism is something that we turn to because we don't have anything else to turn to. I mean, I, I think this was a bit of a missed opportunity in the last government. The last government had an opportunity to try and really change the narrative, give us new ways of talking about things, new ways of looking at things, you know. Um, but you know, politics gets in the way and everything. So, but this is something that we want to do. We want to we want to lead by example and 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 again, you know, develop these new ways of talking about nationhood, talking about what it means to be Malaysian, and make it a bit more widespread, nah, socialize it, normalize it, that kind of thing. You know, and again, uh, of course, it, it has to be something that's um, led by example. I like, you know. So our group, the, the people who consist of our group, come from quite different backgrounds. Again, we've got the Abe Mikram people, we have people from the more Chinese, you know, like Dong Dong or Chinese Assembly Hall, these kind of groups, the Tamil groups, Sabah Sarawak NGOs and things like that. So we, we want to put, you know, put on a phrase that, that, that represents Malaysia as a whole, like, not just certain sectors, you know, not just always English speaking, Bangsa bubble and another kind of thing, different races, different classes. That, that, that's very important to us, our narrative. You know? And then, and as you said, you know, this is crisis. As you say, every crisis is also, also an opportunity. You know, we, we sort of soft launched the organization just two, three days before the MCO. And then, you know, the way the MCO was uh, implemented, it, it, a lot of people were caught unawares. You know, there, a lot, there were a lot of, it was a bit sudden, uh, there was not a lot of preparation. You know, so we tried to, we tried to work together to fill some of those gaps. Like for one thing, you know, so they, when the government closed down all the kindergartens, all the nurseries, you know, you know where, where do the doctors and the nurses who, use, who send their kids to the nurseries, where did they go? <laughs> you know, uh, they, they're stuck. They don't have childcare at home. You know, the, the kindergartens are closed. So, you know, uh, with some of my friends in power, Dr. Siti Manira, she, uh, we, 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 and, and uh, uh, a company called Kiddo Care, we decided to raise money for this uh, firm that sends nannies to your house. You know, things like that. So... Again, it was, it was, I mean, a, a lot of this kind of work is very, um, you know, again, uh, you, when, when you're young, you do things like, you know, work in prefects and things like that. It's, you know, you talk about leadership and things like that. These, these skills come into play. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not about you becoming the boss and telling people what to do, you know, but it's, it's your ability to kind of work with people, find, uh, you know, leverage the strengths of other people, you know, and basically organize things, you know, make something happen that wouldn't have happened otherwise. So I think I think these are you know, talking about education and leadership. These are these are great, uh, great things to have. Like. And then the other thing, of course, that's important is social capital networks. You know your friendships, relationships. You know that you build in school. In fact, uh, in this project that we were working on in the childcare, uh, my sister Christabel was helping out in the free time. Uh, Samantha Chair, the librarian, also helping out. You know, and without them, you know this this project that Jala and I wouldn't have happened. You know? So these are, and you know th these people are willing to help if you if you. If you show them that the cause is, is meaningful, you, you 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 appreciate their work, and you know you 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 make you make it such that uh, that the the, the 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 project is you can see the benefits, you know. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of good that can can come out of this very bad thing, you know. Um, and 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 a lot of good that comes from having built relationships, build up trust over the years, and build up that social capital. Uh, those 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 are always yes. very important. Yes, I agree with you, Nat. And I think uh, in the beginning, you know, things were a bit chaotic because we do not know what we are facing, you know. And I think it's not just Malaysians, it's all over the world. And yeah. we should stop blaming people or blaming whatever, you know. We should look at ourselves and see what we can do. Because I, I always say that in a tragedy, you know, the best of people and the worst of people are reflected. Yes. So I think this is the time for us to sort of think and reflect how can we bring the best of ourselves. And yes. I think it's also worrying uh, now uh, during this time you can have, you know, you're emotionally and mentally drained, you know, and this is something that we need to think about as well, uh, to be positive and to say that, well, at the end of the day, whether we like it or not, we've got to crawl out of this and do something 
and and make it good again. Don't you agree? Yes, definitely. You know, I'm. You know, this 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 kind of situation is very new for everybody. You know, it's it's, it's something new, something scary for everyone. There's a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. You know, um, and and for a lot of people, if if you if you don't have you don't kind of develop good emotional management skills and things like that. These things which are great to learn in school, it can become very challenging. I think we see that a lot. We see a lot of people reacting out of fear, you know, and then it's every time they get a, a scary WhatsApp message, they decide to forward it to ten other groups and things like that. When really it doesn't actually help anything. And, you know, we I understand. You know, people are scared and they're anxious and they kind of lash out or they or they get very angry and they think that oh there are so many Malaysians out on the streets breaking the NCO, catch them, put them in jail. I mean, you know. If you put, if you start putting more people in jail, you're actually creating more crowds and creating a, yes. you know, you might be accelerating the spread of the virus, things like that. Yes. So, you know, I think we have to kind of like train ourselves not to not to lash out in our fear and anxiety, but try to like manage it and kind of channel it positively. Which is again what we're trying to do, like you know, I mean, uh, of course we are we are we are fearful, we are anxious, and we are upset, bored, restless, angry, <laughs> stuck at home. But we have it so much better than a lot of people. Most of us probably still are eating okay. We're still safe, warm, dry, you know, and there are people who are really not, you know, so, um, you know, another thing that we're raising money for is for food and things like that. We, we are lucky to work with some organizations that are supplying, you know, the PPRs, the B40s that are, you know, um, um, having trouble at the moment, or OKUs maybe in the future in some places in Sabah, things like that. These are target communities yes. that, you know, are, are suffering. We, we hear less about because they're not as much on the media or things like that, but they are mm-hmm. really there and even more fearful and even more anxious. So I think it, this is a this is a you know a lot of us probably also have a little bit more time on our hands now. So uh, this is a, a great way to channel it. You know, a great way to practice looking after one another as Malaysians, neighbors, humans. You know, like you say, I think I think this is a great way to to spend your time and energy at this time. Yes, yes, and also to be grateful for what you have. You know, uh, because I think there are other people out there who are in a worse position. We talk about washing our hands. You know that there there are people who don't even have soap. You know, uh, food. You know, so I think it's time for us to learn to be a little bit more grateful, and to feel blessed, and then think yeah. about what we can do. We may not be able to go out there, like you know, like me, a high risk group. You know, not able to go out there, yes, but then you can fine, yeah. send beautiful messages of hope. You know, and, and that's good. I think you know to be positive and not yeah. spread uh, food news. But tell me a little bit about your studies and conflict studies. I'm quite interested in that. Uh, it's 20 years ago now, I can barely remember. No, but what I studied, I studied it was called Peace and Conflict Studies. It was a special concentration, meaning I designed the program myself instead of using one of the established departments. Uh, so I took classes in history and politics in anthropology, sociology, basically trying to understand what is it that makes people Fight, I suppose, you know, uh, but, you know, along the ways I learned quite a lot about just how societies operate in general, you know, how the inherent conflicts, the inherent, you know, differences, how to best manage those differences and things like that, you know, um, and it's been quite interesting. Like, I hope I'm not diverting too far from the topic, but it reminds me, you know, again, uh, like I said, talking about being blessed, you know, I, I really do feel blessed having met all the people that I have doing this project. I mean, in a, in a large but this project is a lot about networking and building social capital and making connections between groups that maybe don't know about each other, putting, uh, connecting resources to, to, to people who need them and things like that. Um, and, and again, it's, 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 it's the, you know, talking about peace and conflict but to some extent, you know, the government, or, you see in the political sphere, is the way our system is built is always about fighting. It's always a government and opposition all the time. There's partisanship all the way. You know, and, and if you're in the opposition, everything the government is, does is bad. If you're in the government, everything the opposition does is bad. This kind of conflict is not productive, like, I think. You know, I think, I think you know, once we come out of this, uh, this, this scenario, I think it's really a good opportunity to relook at our political system as a whole completely. You know, I think politics should be a lot more like civil society. You know, civil society at this point in time, you know, a lot of people are just asking, how can we help? How can we help? How can we work together? I'm not talking about you do this or I do that or I get the credit. I wonder you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, there's... This is again a very unproductive conflict, now, you know. Um, and I, I think I think this this organization and the people I've met through it, you know, I have done an amazing job about. Yeah, it's not all of. I mean, I haven't gone out in. The, I, oh, I'm also, by the way, not that young. It's very sweet of you to say so, but I'm almost forty myself, <laughs> you know. And and I haven't gone out at all, but um, you know, a lot of other people have. They're organizing, you know. They're finding ways to, to deliver food that are safe, you know. They um, and there's so much you can do, you know. Even is 
just as a keyboard warrior nowadays, WhatsApp and everything, right? But just all the kind of um, cooperation that you that that, that, we, that we've managed to do in order to get help from point A to point B, you know, it's been sometimes a real headache, you know, uh, but it's been worth it, now, you know. So these kind of things, you know, but it, it gives me a lot of uh, things to think about. You know, why can't our government be like this all the time? You know, why can't democracy be like this all the time and not about always about elections and about you know not singing and saying oh that guy is bad vote for me because i'm good that guy is bad this guy is bad you know this kind of it's very unproductive conflict you know? and then and the, the stuff that i learned in university yeah, you know, I, I think i think it, it trained us to think about fundamentals like what is democracy actually sometimes people think about democracy is only about elections elections choosing competition things like that that's not what democracy really is about democracy is about trying to find the best solution for everybody and everybody having a say in things that affect them you know, this is what, you know, again, you've got in university, we, we learn about going back down to the fundamentals. Of what are the fundamentals of why people fight? What are the fundamentals of what democracy really is? You know, and how it's changed over the years. So it's quite interesting, like, you know, uh, to, to learn. And it's, it was, university was a good, a good good opportunity to be surrounded by like the best and brightest in the world and see how they think and how they thought. And, you know, by bit by bit, by osmosis, you notice up a bit of some of that. Like, so that was quite, quite cool. Yes. What about your time in school? Oh, on, honestly, like I, 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 you know, talking about prefects, uh, as I think about it over the years, I'm not sure whether it's best to have uh, students disciplining other students, but the idea of like developing leadership skills at, at a young age, I think is, is very helpful. I, I, I think you know, my time as a prefect really like, is really my first real taste of leadership, of management, of organization, you know, and, and it started a, a journey that you know, I've been learning, you know, a learning journey that I've been on ever since I'm still learning. It's really uh, interesting and important uh, things that you know you learn from back then. You know, basically about how to manage people, what's important when it comes to getting things done. How to, you know, some people say leader, leaderless leadership. You know, where you kind of like help to push and make things happen, but without you having to be the one in front. Same like as in government nowadays. You know, it's very it's very pyramid. It's a prime minister on top, and then the prime minister decides absolutely everything. I name every single member of the cabinet to serve at. You know, and if I don't like what they do, I can remove them, change them every time. That's over centralization. Power is a lot about decentralization. You know, you, you 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 let people make their own decisions and, and try to find a way to, to make it make the culture one of like collaboration and making decisions together. You know, so but yeah, my, my, my time was, was, was that that was really fun. Uh. I remember um, my last day of SPM coming out of the exam hall in the bell, you know, um, and the roof there and coming out to the balcony and ask Kami Fazil to come down to the school. And I took off my tie for last time and so I gave him the tie. It's like, okay, see you now. <laughs> uh, and then he did very well. <laughs> enough to become an MP and all that, you know. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice that uh, Christabel is back working there, you know. It's a circle, circle of life kind of thing. Um, you know, we've yes. always been yes. very interested in education. Uh, it's, a, it's a very formative time of people's lives. Uh, well, it's wonderful to have. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's wonderful to have the Tan family with us uh, and, and the bigger Chupato family. And we have moved actually from, you know, a long time ago, I think we we appoint the prefects, but now they apply for the job. They apply for the oh, job and then, they, yeah, I think that's good because then they, they tell us that they want to do it and they go through a probationary yeah. period, and, you know, so they decide for themselves what is important and what is good for the school. And I think that's a, a great way of, uh, you know, starting a, a, a training as a leader, you know, that you tell people you want to do it and give you the job yes. and then you better do it. Properly. And I agree with you about, you know, our the way we run the government in the sense that oh, you, if you are the opposition, your job is just to oppose. And if you're the government, your job is to just to do it, you know. But I think there are certain things like certain bills that need to be passed because it's good for the country. So yeah. they should all then agree to it, not disagree because you're in the opposition and, and everybody in the government must agree because it's from the government. It should be all of you as MPs decide, is it good for the country? Is it good for the people as a whole, you know? I, I think we should move towards that. And, and maybe slowly with the social media, because now, like I said, people cannot hide. People, anybody can see anything. So they have to be a bit more mindful and more thoughtful when they pass laws or when they talk about doing something for the people. We say for the people, you know, so they have to think 
do we want it? Do we need it? And so on and so forth. Uh, something like, uh, you know, there's an issue of child marriages, for instance, you know. So it is a concern of the society. So both sides and everybody must think about it and see what's best for society. I very much agree. Yeah. You know, there's, uh, the, the, the story I like best about this, um, I read about a television host in uh, Norway, I believe it was in the last two or three years or something like that. You know, so she used to organize political debates, you know, the kind of political debates you usually see on TV, right? And then she said, you know, after a while I realized you know, people are tired of these debates. The listeners are tired of it. You know, the hosts are tired of it. And the politicians themselves are tired of it. You know, it's basically everyone yelling, say, I, my idea is the best, your idea is stupid. My idea is the best, your idea is stupid. And everyone is like, <laughs> ah, you know. So she decided to try a completely different format. She decided to try, um, how about this? I changed the format. Instead of you arguing and trying to decide which idea is better, I give you both a problem, you know, something like, uh, like immigration or abortion. And I want you to both... Mm -hmm. Find a solution that you can both agree on. You know, I think the name of yeah. the show is called Agree. You know, so it's a completely different approach. And apparently, like, it was so successful that people were in tears, you know, things that it became a very different experience. I mean, you know, the current system yeah. as, as it is, right? It's like, it's like we have, let's say, 100 good people in the country. And so 50 of them decide, mm -hmm. uh, get to be government. The other 50 decided to be, uh, get to be opposition. And again, they all spend their time fighting one another. And you only have at most half yeah. of the people uh, in charge. When you have 100 smart capable people, you know, who are, are willing and able to contribute. So why not we use a hundred brains together rather than 50, la 150 in a fight that really yeah, yeah. You know, makes, yeah. you know, you, over the last few years, you hear the term a lot, too much politicking, too much politicking, you know, yes. it's, that, that's yes. the, the idea. So I think I think there is a lot of space and market for a completely fresh approach and I, I'm, I'm very eager to try it. And actually, uh, schools can be a, a good laboratory. You, yes. know? Uh, you can try kind of these experiments yes. on children, yeah. Yes. So, well, Ned, after all this, maybe we could do something together, something like okay. that. Yeah, um, yes, excited. I think now, now I think we can go into the Q&A session of sure. our interview sure. today. Yes, sure. Sam, take over. Uh, hi, Ned. Okay, I'm just going to read to you uh, a few questions that we've got sure. and uh, sure. just tell us your views on it. Okay, first sure. question we've got from Mr. Lukman. Um, what do you think are the strongest lessons and takeaways for us as global citizens in the aftermath of a pandemic such as this? Very big question, Mr. Lokman. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I mean, I, I, th I think it's a good time to think about our priorities and what's important and what's, uh, what's, what's, what's really vital for our functioning. I mean, remember this old story is like, you know, think about the cost of a bottle of water versus the cost of a diamond, you know, and if you're on a desert island, which, you know, which, which are you going to need, you know, uh, all the diamonds in the world are not going to save you, you know, we spend so much time by following the lives of celebrities or billionaires and things like that, you know, in a, in a time like this, MCO, imagine if you're the guy who takes your garbage, imagine if he stops working, you know, and imagine the cleaners stop working, you know, society will more or less collapse into anarchy, you know. Uh, you know so it's time to, to, to think about what, what is it that really matters and is valuable to us as a society. You know, um, and again, coming back to those politics things, I mean, so we see some of the failures of the political system today. Like, you know, we see that some, some ministers are doing kind of like publicity stunts, spraying the streets, you know, big groups of people taking up protective covers and things like that. You know, these, these kind of things show, and again, people do these things because they think it's important for the next election. You know, and there's that old saying that politicians think of the next election, statesmen think of the next generation, right? So what is it in our system that, that puts people like that into positions of power and keeps all the smart people and the genuine people out of power? Something's not quite right, you know? Um, and, and how good is that? So like you say, in, uh, talking, since you're talking globally, right? So they say like how Donald Trump is, uh, you know, in the first few days, weeks, months, he was like, this is not a problem, it's just a flu, we shouldn't care about this. Now America is in terrible shape. You know, they, they wanted to downplay this kind of thing because the elections are in November. And if the economy crashes, it's bad for the elections. So if you have people always thinking about elections and not thinking about what's really important, it's a, it's a problem that literally costs the lives of, you know, can be up to millions at this point. So I think, I think, I think you know, among, I mean, of course, I have a bias. This is my area of study and things like that. You know, but I think one of the most important things is, is to rethink our political system, like our idea of democracy. Is it really a democracy? You know, or do we need something vastly different? I mean, similar to us, you know, the last change of power is like, you know, there was one week where, where Malaysia is in crisis and everyone's sort of like 
hanging by the edge, what's going to happen, it's a little bit, it's going this way and then it's going that way. I mean, the one thing that was clear throughout the one week was that the rest of us didn't have a say in it. 222 people did have some sort of say in it, you know, uh, and then the royalty, of course, but the, the people as a whole don't have a say in how government change, you know, how such big decisions are made. So, I, you know, and, 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 when, and when those decisions affect the rest of us in, in, in a case like COVID, it's, it's very troubling. So we, we need to kind of reclaim some of that space and some of that agency is what I think is one of the biggest uh, takeaways. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Nat. Next question uh, from YouTube user Art Without Ambition. What can students and young people do from their homes right now to help combat this sense of helplessness? Thanks. I mean, I think this is a great question. The, first of all, thank you for wanting to do something. Not everybody wants to, and it's great that you do. Um, at this time, you know, there's a lot of, uh, again, uh, there are a lot of NGOs out there doing good work. The main bottlenecks are often the biggest one by far, of course, is money, right? So you fundraise. There are a lot. Of, if you, there's, a, there's a good website, uh, Kita Jaga Kita, I think Kita Jaga .us. Um, They have all sorts of like posters and all sorts of organizations listing out all the people doing good work during this uh, MCO. Uh, Project Wild Sun on our Facebook page, all that we also list out and we also share as many as we can. Right? So, so the simplest thing, of course, you can do is fundraising. You know, you can always try and, and, and get your friends, get your parents, get your families, you know, whoever you can you know, or find whatever creative ways you can to like raise money and channel it to them. Of course, you know, so and part of what we do at Power is we try to do the groundwork of verifying these, these, these uh, NGOs and making sure they are genuine and doing real work and things like that. So that's part of our job. Um, you know, I, I mentioned uh, Christabel, my other sister Cheryl, my wife Debbie, Samantha Chair, the librarian, they, they, and Lalita, of course, and Sia. They, uh, they did a lot of help. Uh, they helped me a lot in terms of organizational work. You know, things like doing Excel sheets, WhatsApp, um, you know, communication, liaison work, um, you know, keeping records and things like that. This is all, to some extent, secretarial work, administrative work, but it was vital. Without them, I guarantee you, we wouldn't have done as much as we could. I think uh, we've raised about, what is it? Um, I can't remember, 70, 80,000. We, we, we've paid for about 38,000 worth of childcare uh, so far. Uh, and again, we, it, was, it was a lot of administrative work. Like, sounds like just one thing, but it's like 20 other things you need to do. And I need, we, all, we always need people, volunteers to help do a lot of the groundwork, you know? So, so there, there are ways, you know, just get in touch with people, volunteer, you can get in touch with me if you like. But you know those two things are, are, are the two small things that you can do right from your computer, you know, and then spread the word now, of course. Um, um, again, Project Watson Ryan, our Facebook, our Twitter, Instagram. I think a little bit, you know, we 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 try and share what people are doing, you know, and and always spread positivity. You know, don't forward negative messages, scary messages, unverified messages. You know, try and spread things that inspire people uh, or give people ways to help. You know, things like that. These are these are useful. Spread positivity and constructiveness but yeah so yeah if you if you want more specific things you can always try and get in touch okay thank you nat uh one more question i think it's trying to squeeze two more questions here this is from uh muhammad ilham who's actually the current head prefect of the bucket um Ooh. you might have answered a bit of it in your previous answer but i think it's also referring to after the mco on how mm. the youth can contribute to nation building of course you said earlier on that I think a lot of what the youth understand is, okay, I must go vote next time because I think if they're trying to bring the voting down, uh, voting is to below, what, to, to 18, right? But mm. as you said earlier on, democracy is just more than the election. So what, what, how would you like to see youth contribute towards nation building post-MCO? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I really do believe in this young people thing. And again, I'm not that young myself, but um, you know, one of the, the most important things about youth is idealism youth tend to be a little bit more cleaner when it comes to these kind of things, you know? Um, so what, what you can do, I mean, I, I think, I think um, <laughs> the first thing I could, I, I think one way to put it, the first thing I would say is be bold in your imagination. You know, um, power is a lot about not doing things the old way, doing things a new way, right? And like I said, coming back to fundamentals, you go to university soon and again, hopefully if your university is any good, they'll teach you to think about fundamentals. What is really, you know, we look beyond the surface, look at what really matters. What is democracy? What is the essence? Is it about elections? Voting is very important, of course, but the way our system is, you know, how important is our vote? And if our vote is not important, how do we make it more important? Or, or do we go beyond voting and, you know, talk about how to encourage democracy at a local level, right? At our, at our, at our communities and our neighborhoods, you know? How do we 
get active like get 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 people involved in a positive way in decision making that kind of thing you know so 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 read widely read as as, as much as you can you know um try and understand and, and 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 don't be caught up in old ways of doing things huh? the old ways that you know we use a westminster system you know i always like to say if i on your handphones right if i put an app that's on your phone today on a handphone from 10 years ago that phone will break you know that that's how fast things change in, in technology but our political system the way we vote and the way we choose our government this is recognizable from you know 100 200 years ago the stuff is old <laughs> it's really really old and it needs a complete rehash so get involved huh? and you know don't don't be don't be too uh, you know don't don't think at all just because politics today looks really dirty that that's the way it has to be it doesn't have to be that way politics is what we make it government is what we make it and democracy is what we make it so yeah um, study as much as you can get involved get in touch if you want to you know um, there are always ways huh? yeah, they're, they're, and, and then we're, tr we're trying to build this platform so that it become easier for people to get involved easier for, for, for concrete things to do you know have those conversations talk to your friends you know, um, eventually a, a nation is made out of its people and the more people who are thinking innovatively, who are being bold, who are believing in that, we can do a lot better. You know, Malaysia is a lot about, you know, a lot of us feel there's so much unfulfilled potential. You know, how do we fulfill that potential? How do we change the system completely? You know, we, eventually we're going to need the foot soldiers. Uh, so we remember Muhammad Ilham, the name <laughs> will come for you soon enough. <laughs> Yes, can I also add a little bit? I think we need to know what's going around around us, you know, to be more interested. Like if you're in school or in university, it's not just like going to school, just read a textbook, do the exams, get out and then go to university again, the same thing, do an exam, get a degree, get a job, and that's it. You you've close your minds to what's going around you, what's going out there to society to the community, your own immediate community and the big society to the nation. We don't want to be caught suddenly, eh, what happened? Eh? Oh, wow, there is this, whatever it is, there's all the corruption and so on and so forth. We should actually, like you said, be part of it, you know, be part of uh, this, the conscience of the people. And in order to do that, you need to be interested, isn't it? To be interested in your, your community, your society, to, to nation. Yes. So, so sorry, Dato. We have uh, okay, 60 okay. seconds left. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe you have to wrap so thank up. You, Ned. Uh, Ned, can you wrap it up uh, this session today? And we thank you very much for coming on our webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe, maybe just the last thing, you know, on, on the same note, you know, we talk about, some people say, talk about thinking outside the box. You know, we should think about, do we need a box in the first place? What is the shape of the container we need? You know, come back to the fundamentals. <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. Once again, it's been really happy. I mean, I've been really happy to come back and be among Tim Parkers again and to talk and share. And um, we are, I am more than happy to explore further how we can keep working together. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, if, you, if you have time or resources, please feel free to donate uh, if, if you like and read more about us at www.pragya.org. Um, it's been a blast. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Tan. Thank you, Dr. The snap will do. <laughs>